Hey there, Libra. Welcome to your reading for, uh, this is your March bonus reading, actually. We're just gonna see what comes up. This is gonna be like a free flow reading, and you have this card that says beginnings, and it says something new is emerging, or a new source of income, and you have the Ace of Wands, which is literally something new emerging into your life. There's a castle right here that's crumbling, and I always say that the Ace of Wands is really out with the old, in with the new, so, um, you know, clearly, <laughs> there's a passionate new beginning coming in for you at this time, Libra. And I feel it's going to lead to like a lot more um, freedom, I would say, with this four of wands right here. This could be like financial freedom that's coming in for you. Um, I also think that it's interesting that, you know, I kind of look at this as like a choke point. You know, it's like you have the five of pentacles with the four swords, just how it's popping into my head, like in your reading here. It's almost like you have to go through this something here. <laughs> and I'm not exactly clear um, what it is, but um, we're going to we're going to take a look and see uh, what what could be going on here. You know, I kind of have something interesting popping into my head as well that for some of you, it's like part like I feel like some of you are really kind of like doing something that could get you a lot of attention. And there could be moments where you feel like people are stealing your ideas, you know, especially if you're on like social media or something like that. And really, you know, they say flattery is the highest form of, um, you know, the highest compliment or whatever they say. I don't know. I, I lost my train of thought there, <laughs> Libra. But they, you know, they say, uh, oh, no, they say, um, you know, mimicry is the highest form of flattery, right? And uh, so I kind of, number one, I would say that, you know, I would say that it should be flattering. But number two, I just don't think it's going to matter. Um, I feel that focus is really important at this time for everyone. So it's like if we're focusing on the people who are like, you know, stealing our stuff on social media, for example. I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm just saying that I think you have bigger and better things to do, you know, than pay attention to, you know, people who can't think for themselves. So, you know, that obviously is only going to be for some of you. I also feel like it's interesting that, you know, this has been a very, you know, common story coming up here. Five of Pentacles, Five of Swords to the Tower. It seems to me like, you know, all of us as a collective, are being asked to take some sort of leap of faith or to take a risk, five of swords, towards something new. So it definitely seems to be a very much a collective energy where we're kind of, um, we're, maybe we're all just like a little bit over-prepared, right? You know, I think the universe is finally saying like, okay, it's time to leave the nest. You know, it's time for you to, um, you know, you've learned as much as you can or you've gotten everything you can out of a situation. But now it's time for you to kind of like spread your wings and fly. And that is definitely the vibe that I'm getting from your reading. You have the Two of Swords as well. So, you know, again, sometimes I think Two of Swords can be like negotiation or, <laughs> you know, maybe you're trying to negotiate with the universe. You're like, I'm not ready to to leave this situation yet. I want to see how this battle plays out, you know? But I really get the feeling of like, you know, again, outgrowing the nest. That's where we're at so far um, in your reading. It's like you've outgrown the nest or you've kind of like risen above a situation and you know it's no longer there's no point in paying attention to like past drama or you know past relationship that you could be fighting over or whatever the case may be i don't know this is going to weird places let's see i want to clarify this we're using the oracle of the radiant sun to clarify with ace of wands you have the generosity card i feel like there is a very uh generous future coming in for you here. This makes a lot of sense to me, as I always say, with Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto and Aquarius, we're just gonna see a lot of people who are like stuck to the old way of doing things when there's a new way of doing things. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, as I always say, it's like we're all here for different reasons. Some people are meant to be stuck maybe, right? But um, what I would say is it's gonna be a lot easier to kind of move towards the new way of doing things. So don't be afraid to change, basically. With the Fool, you have the Escape card, yeah, this is your escape. <laughs> this is where true freedom lies, is in going like this, going four of wands to the five of swords. It's like, I feel like saying you're not done yet. You know, it's like, hmm, you know, sometimes I feel like four of wands, like these people are celebrating on the other side of this portal. They're having, you know, this is the portal right here. They're having a celebration on the other side. But the four of wands says we have to complete something. You know, it is a card of completion. We have to end something to get to the next thing. But sometimes I think like, um, 
Maybe we think that we're in the best relationship of our lives, and but maybe it really sucks. <laughs> and, you know, it, this could be saying, like, you're holding on to something that you think is great, even though maybe in the back of your mind you know it's not. And you're holding on to it because you think there's nothing on the other side of the portal when there's actually a celebration. Same thing with a job or a business. It's like, you know, I feel like people need to realize it's like you're not a one-trick pony. It's like if you had success once, you can have success again. And, um, you know, I kind of see a little bit of that thinking here where you could be thinking, like, oh, I, I need to hold on to something, whatever it is. It, you know, very, it's very ambiguous in your reading. I think maybe because it's different for all of you. And um, it's like you're holding on to something, but there could be something much greater that that is like outside of this nest, this comfort zone, whatever you want to call it. With the Two of Swords, you have this influence card. Mm, you know, there is something here. I wouldn't really call this a love reading. I would say this is a very ambiguous general reading. <laughs> uh, I, so again, I'm, I'm hoping this reading is making sense to some of you. I feel like it's a good reading because of what it's encouraging you to do. But at the same time, I do feel like for a small percentage of you, you could be thinking about a past connection. Um, I kind of feel like it was influenced by some something here. I also have like a weird message popping into my head where it's like some of you could have been with a person where it's like your energy was the same. I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> I mean like, you know, like let's say it's it's almost as if, um, you know, it's like two feminine energies coming together. There was like no balance. And again, I'm not talking about gender here. I'm sure somebody's gonna take it there. Chill out, okay, number one. But number two, what I would say is that it, it's like the two energies was the same. There was like no balance. I, I don't know, that's what's popping into my head. Um, and I feel like where you're going is somewhere much better. Uh, next, you have this card that says, with greater awareness, you will find the answers you're looking for. You know, to find greater awareness, we have to expand our circumstances. We have to kind of leave comfort zones, right? Because, um, you know, if you're like a bug and you live in a jar for your whole entire life, then your awareness is the jar. But if you're a bug and you get out into the world and you spread your little bug wings and fly all over the place, your awareness becomes greatly expanded. That's how I'm seeing it in my head, is that you need to expand your awareness through experience experiences, um, you know, this could be mental or physical. You could be traveling, moving. But again, I feel like whatever you can do, uh, you know, to have new experiences um, would be a really good idea with this card. You have the Five of Pentacles, the Four of Wands, and the Four of Swords. I see this as a choke point, like I was saying at the beginning of the reading. Very strange message that I'm getting here. It's almost like, you know, it's like there's the difference between Five of Pentacles, feeling left out in the cold, right? Five of Pentacles could also say that maybe you feel like you lack the resources necessary to take a leap of faith with that full card, even though this is saying to me, this whole entire reading is basically saying that the leap of faith is going to be the thing that helps you escape your current circumstances. But it also seems like a double-edged sword. Or maybe, again, I don't think it is. I think maybe that's how you're seeing it. Like I said, you could be trapped in cir certain circumstances, but there's like something better for you, but you could feel that leaving would hurt you, but I don't think it really would. What, if you're leaving a job, a relationship, whatever, it doesn't matter. Four of Wands is the card of freedom. It is a card of being set free, and it is also a card of kind of completing something. This right here looks like a finish line. So I always say that the Four of Wands is my card of like a finish line. It's 11-11 as well. So there's like a lot of luck available to you. I do feel like some of you are kind of like waiting for some blessings. You know, there's a person right in this stained glass window right here who is receiving blessings from another person. But again, I keep telling people that, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, with Pluto and Aquarius, I keep saying to people, it's like nothing, no one is coming to save us. Like if you're hoping, and, and that doesn't even have to be a person. <laughs> you know, it's like you could be hoping for the circumstances to be right for you to start a business or for you to get a new job, but it's never going to happen. So you have to just do, the, the trick is to do it right now, to not wait to just get started. Uh, with the Five of Pentacles, you have this authority card. Some of you, I feel, could feel that there are authority figures that are holding you back. You could feel like there are, you know, people, places, and things that are preventing you from finding success. I also want to say that a lot of people have had the tower this week, and you go down to the tower. I do think we could see a global leader, you know, stepping down or something happening this week, just because uh, so everybody's had something very similar. So it seems to be like one of those weeks. And you know, put on Aquarius wouldn't really surprise me. Plain and simple. <laughs> With the four of wands, you have this lust card. Um, I feel like there could be new connections coming in for you here. I feel like this person, you know, kind of helps expand your worldview. It, this person feels like a risk here to me. And 
um, you know, but we go this way and Eight of Wands is quick success. So I do feel like there will be a lot of desire. Could be an Aries that's coming in for you, I would say, or an Earth, Aries and Earth kind of stand out to me right now. So does Libra. <laughs> so it could be another Libra that's coming in for you, Libra. But, um, you know, take how it resonates. Could be any sign. I feel like there's a lot of attraction here. And, you know, I feel like this person kind of has something to teach you, which is interesting. The other interesting thing is, I'm not so sure this is gonna be permanent, is what I would say. If you're meeting a new person, for some of you, obviously, it'll be a permanent connection, but I have that teacher kind of thing floating around in my head. So you might meet a person where they just come into your life to teach you something and then you move on, which, you know, again, there's nothing really wrong with that. Uh, with the Four of Swords, you have the Friendship card. Could even be a friend um, that is coming in for you. Look at all the birds. <laughs> you have this card with the bird on it up here. If it wants to focus, it doesn't apparently, but come on. Like, what the hell? There we go. So there's the bird. You have the Seagull card. And uh, do we see? Well, I guess that's it. But still, you know, a lot of bird imagery going on here. I feel like friends could be very helpful for you. Uh, next, you have this spirit card. It says, unseen forces watch over you. You're being guided at this time. I do feel like you're protected from like risk at this time as well. So it's like, kind of seems to me like nothing, nothing that you can't handle will happen to you. And I do feel like you're being protected. I also feel that you are kind of being guided. You have the temperance card, the five of swords and the page of swords here. Temperance, you know, I do like I, I get this feeling of like trying to make something work, you know, with the temperance card. Temperance is like cause it's kind of like mixing two things together. It's a card of alchemy. It's a card of transformation, turning one thing into another. Um, but I but I get the feeling here uh, that says like, you know, I feel like you need to be honest about your situation. If you're trying to fix a relationship, for example, um, I'm not suggesting that you don't try to fix it if that's what you're trying to do. But what I am suggesting is that you pay attention to the results with this energy is what I'm getting here. It's like if you're not seeing results after a certain period of time, I feel like it's time to move on. You know, it's like I gave myself years ago, I gave myself um, a rule because, you know, I'm a Gemini moon and I have all these crazy ideas for like business and everything like that. And like years ago, I would just like try everything at once. And of course I would get nothing done. So I gave myself a rule that I work on like one thing every single quarter and that's it. I don't give, I don't give myself any other new projects to work on just one thing at a time. And, you know, since I started doing that, I get a million times more things accomplished than I did before. Right. And I kind of get that energy here where like, I feel like it would be better for you to give something a time frame, like a good amount of time, like three months, a quarter. Right. Um, and, but if there's no change after that, maybe it's time to change. Right. So I feel like that we're really bad at that as humans, like, cause I'm, I'm the worst at it. That's why I'm saying this <laughs> is like, we're really bad at knowing like when, like how much time to give. Cause I like, I'm, I also don't like want to quit on anything either. And I kind of get that feeling for you where it's like, you don't want to quit necessarily. Um, but you also want to give something enough time, but not too much time. And I kind of get that popping into my head where what, like whatever it is you're working on business relationship, doesn't matter work, I would give it like a certain amount of time, whatever your goal is. And then if it doesn't work, then it's time to change. Right. Uh, you have the Five of Swords, something about a risk. I always say that Five of Swords is a card of winning at all costs. It can also represent a separation, a breakup. If you're going through a separation or a breakup, I feel that someone was just in their ego here. And I feel like it's already, you know, it's like you already know the story. So I probably don't need to repeat it. I would also say that uh, the Five of Swords, though, to me, is a card of taking a risk. And uh, there's a bunch of reasons why. But I always say that it's probably a good idea to take a risk with this card. So, you know, these are calculated risks like starting businesses or moving on to something new. You have the Page of Swords. Page of Swords to me is like the card of like the detective to me. He really looks into things that he is interested in. Like if he start, wants to start something, you have this beginnings card. Clearly, there's a new beginning here. Uh, you know, he really kind of like does his research. So I feel like doing research would be a good idea. The other thing that I would say is, I mean, again, <laughs> you know, this is going to happen a lot right here uh, during Pluto and Aquarius. We also have Neptune and Pisces. I always say that Neptune and Pisces, it's like, you know, we've been raised to believe that the sky is blue and the ground is green, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the sky is green and the ground is blue, but we just don't know it. Right. So, you know, I, I see that over the next 20 years, even even though Neptune leaves Pisces in 2026 at the end of 2025, really, um, you know, I, I think over while Pluto's in Aquarius, we could have a lot of those moments where it's like we find out that the sky is green and the ground is blue. And, you know, it, it's just I don't know, like, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad. I think it just 
you know, <laughs> I don't know, just just like the energy that we're all dealing with, right? Uh, with the temperance card, you have the enthusiasm card. You have some, there's something new, something that you can be very enthusiastic about. It's going to move very quickly. If you're asking a question like, should I move towards this new business or this new beginning or a new person? The answer is clearly yes, especially if you feel good about it. With the five of swords, you have this fulfillment card. Yep, I feel like taking a risk, there's gonna be a lot of fulfillment on the other side of some sort of risk that you could be taking. There's gonna be a lot of success. I see money even for a lot of you. And again, the towers come up quite a bit during these readings that I've been doing, uh, these bonus readings. And it came up a lot in the Mar March monthly readings as well. But I really feel it's a time that we're in. And I really feel that just like, it's, it's a transformation transformation time like everybody is going to be making some sort of change right now so you know it just is what it is with the page of swords you have this detachment card uh no expectations um again this is this has come up a surprising amount of times as well i feel like people like if we have expectations we could end up disappointed but obviously if we have no expectations on things then we can be kind of like more flexible and that's like a little bit of the energy that i get here uh, at the end you have the seagull card it says look at the bigger picture bird's eye view yes i'm pluto and aquarius is a star card the star card is all about getting a bird's eye view so looking at the big picture of the things that you're wanting to accomplish is going to be very important. You have the um, Eight of Wands, Page of Cups, and the Tower. The other thing that I would warn you about at this time is I feel like there's going to be, there are going to be a ton of distractions. I've said this a million times in the past where it's like people are going to scream, the sky is falling, bad things are happening, stock market's collapsing, like whatever the hell is going on, right? And I'm not saying that these things aren't important, but are they important to you? is my question and um, is focusing on it gonna move your life forward? Uh, any of these things that could be happening in the world over the next 20 years, easy, uh, easily. Really, I would say people ask me like, when are things gonna get better? And really, I think that 2033, I know that's 10 years away. That does not mean, again, I want to stress, that does not mean the next 20, you know, 10 years are gonna be horrible. I'm just saying that I really don't think we're gonna see like major improvements until then. But that does not mean you can't make improvements in your own life. <laughs> so I would be making those improvements. Um, but what I would say is one of the ways to do that is to ignore the sky is falling. You know, if there are if there's a bunch of people screaming about something, chances are you're not that not everybody is seeing the big picture. I think that with you know with the the um, you know the beer bug situation that we've had, I think that there's plenty of truths that have come out about that that basically proved that. I'm not saying it was a sky is falling situation, but you know, there are some truths that have come out and trust me, they're going to be more. So, you know, it's like one of those things where um, it's like, I'm not saying ignore these situations. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a crazy person, so don't listen to me. But you know, also there you go. You have the page of cups. I feel like if there's love coming in for you uh, that it could be a little bit surprising and <laughs> you know, it could come out of nowhere. I also feel like it's probably someone who's very different than your usual type, which everybody's been getting this. I think we are in a time of great change in love as well. I've talked about this extensively in the past, so probably just new love. You have the Eight of Wands. Again, any new risks you're taking, I feel like they're gonna lead to major success. Again, I feel like our focus, I keep talking about this because I think it's super, super important that we stay focused, that we don't worry about um, things that are outside of our control, you know? And that, again, that doesn't mean, someone always comes at me and is like, how dare you not worry about the, you know, almost extinct red chipmunk from Bolivia? How dare you not worry about that? I'm like, um, sorry, I just don't worry about it, <laughs> you know? So it's like, unless you're gonna go to Bolivia and start breeding the red chipmunks, which if you do that, by the way, I will 100% support that decision and I'm all for it if you're gonna actually make the change. But if you're not gonna, if you're just gonna sit there and squawk, like, right, like all these birds in this reading, doesn't matter. With the Eight of Wands, you have the, um, another bird, basically. You have this empathy card. Uh, I feel like there is like, you know, I feel that this is in saying that there could be a person who's like really kind of like understands your situation that's coming in for you. Very different energy. Isn't it interesting that I said something about how at the beginning of the reading, it's almost like you've dealt with a person where it's like your energy was the same in the sense that it was imbalanced. I feel like this person, your energy is in the same, it, it, your energy is the same, but it's balanced. They're coming from an understanding position. So maybe you confused that in the past, very weird message. Like maybe you thought your past person was maybe you thought that there was an energetic connection, but it's really just that they were the same energy as you. There was no balance. This person is the same, 
but there's balance because they, they're the same because they understand you. It's not because they're the same as you. Man, that was a mouthful. I hope that makes sense. There you go. Uh, with the Page of Cups, you have this convention card. Yeah, I mean, uh, I always say that, you know, to me, convention is going to be the one thing that keeps you stuck. Telling the old story, telling the story of what you used to be, who you used to be. Uh, living old stories in life in general, we all do it. I'm guilty of it. I do the same freaking thing every single day. Like, trust me, I, I, I you know, I get it, <laughs> right? But we need to break out of this with Pluto and Aquarius. That's how you will thrive over the next 20 years is to do things differently, to try new things, to experiment, right? To break free of old stories, old patterns, you know, all that other stuff. Uh, with, and your life can be abundant if you do that. With the tower, you have this idealism card. Yeah, nothing is going to be perfect Again, over the next, you know, good chunk of time. But for the people that understand that and that can work with that, uh, I feel like you'll be very successful. Again, um, you know, the way I talk about Pluto and Aquarius, I think it sounds bad, but it's really not, you know, it, especially if you work with the energy. Uh, we're going to pull five main themes now. You have this Lily card. It says spiritual love. I'm telling you right now. I, I not really love reading, but I do feel for some of you, there is like a spiritual connection and there's a major difference. It's similar, but different, which is what I want to keep saying here. You know, it's like they understand you on a certain level. And, you know, again, I would be careful of running away from the situation because sometimes I think if we get triggered by a past situation where we're like this person is kind of acting like the past person, you know, but maybe not in a bad way. It's like maybe the past person, you know, past people all have good things about them, right? But maybe it reminds you of that. I would say to yourself, do they remind me of that? Or is this just like a higher vibe version of that, right? Or I don't know, something like that. You figure it out. <laughs> you have this hat card. It says you will be playing a different role. Yeah, we see um the crown falling off the top of the tower. So it wouldn't surprise me if you're getting like a new job or starting a new position. You have this throne card. You have the authority card. This card here says position of authority. If you're trying to become, I, haven't I said this to you before? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was you where I was saying that you could be becoming an authority figure. You could be getting a job or a business or doing something that makes you an authority. You have this career card, could be in your career. And you finally have this wedge card. It says someone is trying to come between you and a friend or something that you want. Could be a past person. I feel like this person has imbalanced energy. So again, if you have a person in your life who has imbalanced energy, meaning they say one thing and they do another, then I would cut that person out. And I, that's like, to me, it's very clearly popping into my head as if you're wondering who this person is, I would look back at your interactions with them. They say one thing, they do another. So cut that person out. But a uh, really interesting reading, probably the most interesting I've done in a while, honestly. Um, so thank you for being here and definitely enjoy your month.